Faking a Murderer is a Canadian comedy satire horror hybrid that follows two filmmakers on a hunt for a man they suspect to be a killer after discovering his strange videos online. The duo soon finds themselves in over their heads and not only on the production side but in the chase itself, crossing the boundaries of documentary making into danger. The film is written and produced by Adam Rodness and Stu Stone and of course they star in the film as themselves, Stu also directed the production. Faking a Murderer is obviously a play on the title of the highly successful Netflix series Making a Murderer. The film lightly points out the issues of true crime documentary film making, the issues that we all think about but rarely discuss. I'm talking about the overproduction of these storylines, skewing the narrative, and of course the filmmaker's moral compass. Using satire, this film is able to point out the irony of the genre in a clever and thoughtful way. When I first saw this film, I was very curious to see how far it would step into the horror genre, how much of this film would actually be horrific. Lucky for us, the filmmakers were very aware of this and the way it tiptoes into the genre is very interesting and compelling. And because of this, this film is anything but predictable. So yeah, let's just say, there is blood. It's really a special thing when a film can blur the lines between genres and break the rules. In fact, it's thrilling and that's exactly how I felt about this film. They lure the viewer in with a gimmick and the comedy and before you know it, you really care about what happens to these characters. So when things start to go south for them, they have you right in the palm of their hands. And a lot of this is the result of the filmmakers, their chemistry, and then of course their production process, which I learned was more based in reality than I initially thought. I sat down with them to talk more about the film. Hi guys. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Absolutely. I absolutely loved your movie. I thought it was so funny. So I wanted to talk to you guys or ask you guys about how you got the tonal balance in your film because obviously it goes from being com like completely hilarious to really dark really fast and then balances it back out. So um, yeah, how did you get that mixture right? Well, um, you know, we always wanted to create something that would kind of make the audience think. So we wanted to be really clever on how to approach the actual tone of, of the filmmaking process. And we did a, uh, a movie called Jack of All Trades, which was a traditional documentary. Um, and then we were also doing some movies called, we did a horror, horror movie called Scarecrows and another one called The Haunted House on Kirby Road. And we decided to mishmash those together. So the intention was to bring the audience on for a ride, to, to allow the audience to, to feel what it's like to be in the shoes of ordinary people who want to be true crime investigators. Um, so, so make them part of, of our, of our, of our theme and then use the, you know, the, the, the quips of, uh, documentary filmmaking and then also adding in our horror stuff that we've been, uh, working on to, to try to, to make, kind of shake things up. Yeah. And also if I, if I may add, you know, in, this is a good life lesson in life opposites attract, you know what I mean? Oil and yeah. vinegar yeah. go well together on a nice salad. Horror and comedy go very well together when served properly. And obviously we're not the first people to do that, but we're huge fans of the type of horror movies that do have comedy elements in them. And, you know, it's a perfect thing to have in a horror movie because if you make someone laugh, they're comfortable, they're at ease, they're calm, their heart's not pounding. And it's a good way to sort of like, you know, switch gears on them. It's, it becomes this like very jarring thing to go from one extreme to the other. So we used it as a tool. All right. We want to give people a total mind fuck. We want to fuck with their heads. Whoa, so much swearing. And we want to make sure that they're going to be taken for a ride. The story seems so tight because there were so many different elements in there. Um, there's so much going on. Uh, was there any room for improv? Because obviously you guys have a big chemistry between you. I just wondered how much it's of like that was scripted. Like 100% of it is improv. There's, oh, really? There's no script for this movie. Uh, wow, there's, I did there's, not know that. There's, so okay. there's, there's a beat sheet, there's an outline. Like Stu and I knew what we were going to do. A map, right? But like the actual dialogue you hear is 100% all improv. Because the people that are in the scenes with us don't realize that they're a part of this. They're real people. You know, there's only a few people who are quote unquote actors in the film. And even those people, like, it's not like we gave them a script and said, oh, here's the scene. Like Adam and I had to make this roadmap that 
accounted for any sort of puzzle piece that could be thrown our way, you know, like a choose your own adventure sort of adventure. So it's like we had to have a plan A, plan B, plan C. And just in case this happened or that happened, because we had to, we got to go with it. Now we know which direction we want to lead people in because we know the story that we're trying to tell. But not everybody knows. <laughs> it's very hard to tell a story with people when they don't know the story themselves. So uh, it was kind of challenging, but it was a lot of fun. Plus, you have like one take to, to do it, right? There's like you get that one opportunity to go in and talk with a real private investigator. You get a one opportunity to go talk with the real police. Yeah. You go on a real ride along like that. All that shit was real and it was shot like a doc because at those times it was a doc. Like yeah. They were following the process that we were going on. And yeah, that's the other thing. Like Adam said, like you can't say like, OK, can we try that again? And then they know that it's BS. And like the worst thing you can do in a movie like this is try to rely on people who aren't actors to act. Because then the audience, like yourself, will see right through it and they won't – the illusion is no longer there. It's a multi-watch movie. Like you could watch the movie first and see like, oh, OK, this is – OK, you'll make up your mind on kind of what it is at the end. And then this, the second time you watch it, you're picking apart like what's real, what's fake, you know, who was in on it, who's not. And the third time you watch it, you can watch it in a whole different light. Like you'll see a, a bunch of stuff that we did and all the clues we hid. And all the stuff that we dropped along the way, and you'll probably be able to put most of it together. Yeah, I did not know any of that, so that makes a lot more sense now why it feels so, I guess, organic. I do want to ask you about your true crime, um, your interest in true crime. Obviously, it comes off the true crime boom, which is quite clever because it's such a huge thing at the moment. Um, are you guys, I'm sure you're true crime fans. Do you yeah. follow all of the... Yeah, I mean, that's that's how this whole thing like was like, you know shot off in the first place we were such fans of the jinx and the staircase and making a murderer and evil genius and all these in incredible shows that were like this stuff is way too good like it's so entertaining it's got to be produced and like that's when it clicked like oh my god let's make our own and then and, and we worked on it for a long time we rehearsed a long time and then we started to shoot it and it just kind of all fell together but that's exactly how it all came together our generation uh, is fascinated by this stuff and I think like Adam said like the ones that came out in the last decade like really elevated the whole genre to a whole other level and it allowed us to come in and sort of do a satire in our own way a couple people are like kind of they're describing it as like the Borat of true crime so like you know the, the Stu and I know what's up Everyone else around mm -hmm. us has no idea what's up. Even even the actors that are in the film they don't, don't, know don't know what's, what's up. On. Like they they only know what but we want to tell. The thing about them. Borat is you watch Borat and you know that he's a character and that's a character and that he's fucking with people. Like our thing, we're ourselves. Like you don't know that, and I think that's so cool. There's this moment where the movie clearly shifts, right? And so people at that exact moment, it's a very polarizing moment, and people are either either angry that we just took them on this journey. Or they think it's genius and they're like, oh, my God, they got me. Like, I can't wait to see where this goes. But I think either way, people want to see what happens next. I don't think anybody's turning it off at that point. They want to. They're they, invested. They're invested at that point either way. I honestly haven't been this excited about an independent production in a very long time. I watched this film and was completely blown away. I laughed so hard I cried, given it is satire, so it is a very particular style of humor, and I was just completely shocked. Obviously, I love unique storytelling and the way that this story is written, although as we've just discovered, there's a lot of improv involved, is so clever. The editing really brings it all together and it's just a ride from start to end. It's nonstop. There's so many interesting characters. And as they told me as well, there's a lot of breadcrumbs in this film that you may not pick up on the first viewing, which is really interesting that they put this level of detail into this film. Obviously, this is not their first film together. They've worked together on a lot of productions, but just something about the story and their characters and and the chemistry and just the way they incorporated real life into this mockumentary. It's just the perfect storm and I just really enjoyed this film. Adam and Stu's chemistry is lightning in a bottle, teamed with a compelling story that shines a different light on the true crime boom. If you like satire, true crime and horror, which actually I know a lot of us do, this really is the perfect storm and it's well worth your time. Obviously I'm a huge fan of this kind of comedy and what's really funny is I was sent the trailer and obviously you guys know I don't like to watch a lot of trailers. I watched the first like, I guess, you know, 20 seconds, and there was this scene. The next logical step is for us to investigate murder. And 
I just had to see this film and I have to say it has the same energy as the trailer which is very rare for a film to really present exactly what is going to give you and it, they just pulled it off fantastically. I'm giving this film an 8 out of 10. I think it's a great production and I can't wait to see more from these guys. Absolutely love it. I'm going to give it a originality score of an 8 as well which is quite high. I haven't done that in a very long time. When you see it you'll understand the marriage of these two genres, comedy and horror. You know we've seen it time and time again but not in this kind of way. Um, not in a mockumentary way in a similar tone. I'm giving the film a 4 out of 10 for scare. I don't think it's that scary, but it is a little bit gory and I definitely wouldn't recommend it to a younger audience at all. The film is out on the 6th of August. You can rent it on most streaming platforms, including Google, Amazon, iTunes, and Vudu. I hope you guys like it as much as I did. Please leave your comments if you've just seen the film down there. I can't wait to see what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends. By the way, how do we sound? Because Stu has bought some brand new microphones. Do we sound? You sound great. Do we sound professional? Good. Yeah. <laughs> it works. You yeah. sound good. Thanks. Beautifully. How do I sound Look, now? I can even do like a... Uh... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> she likes that one. God. It's like 8 a.m. here, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Morning.